Dr. Chris Augustine, director of the Dickinson Research Extension Center. We evaluated 16 different fertilizer treatments that include a couple different liquids in furrow. Uh, we hand broadcast 11520, urea. We had some foliar feedings at different growth stages as well as some different mixes of foliar feedings. Um, we had inoculation uh, as, as a treatment. And, and at the end of the day, we didn't see a single response. Uh, this was the course over three years. Each year we had two sites. Two of them were in the Minot area. Uh, one was a little bit closer to Garrison. And then we had three sites uh, more so in the Crosby area. Uh, and out of all, everything was said and done. We, we didn't see a response. These were low testing uh, fertility soils. So the phosphorus tests were um, around four or six, I believe, for uh, about every site. Um, Soybeans were a previous crop within the past four years. In most instances, soybeans were two years or so prior to the year I did that research. Usually wheat was the uh, preceding crop. There was two times where soybeans was the previous crop. Um, but with all that, uh, we didn't see a single response. Um, and so working with other researchers uh, throughout the state, we kind of compiled uh, all of our findings together for the past 15 years or so and, and and we still don't recommend any nitrogen on soybeans because they have that rhizobia that fix its own nitrogen but we did adjust the phosphorus recommendations and so if your soil test is eight parts per million or greater and that's on an Olson phosphorus test and we recommend Olson in North Dakota not just because of our higher pHs but Olson's been found to be very um, very good at predicting uh, if you're going to have a deficiency or not across a whole gamut of pHs, but we have a lot of calcium in our soils that can tie up phosphorus. And so the Olson, I think, does a better job of accounting for that versus like a Bray phosphorus test. But um, soil test comes back eight parts per million or greater. We don't recommend any phosphorus. If you have um, a soil test from like four to eight parts per million, probably 26 pounds of P205. So you'd be looking at right around 50 pounds of 11.520 per acre. If your soil test is less than uh, four parts per million, we'd recommend about 50 pounds of P205. So now you're around 100 pounds of 11.520 per acre. We still recommend broadcasting the phosphorus versus incorporating. But if you're in no-till country, you know, you gotta get that stuff in the soil. So probably banding is your best option because you wanna get that in the soil and not have it sit on the surface. So we did do a little bit of tweaking with the potassium recommendations and that's more site specific throughout the state and that's based on the clay mineralogy. So if you're in areas uh, like the Red River Valley, Morton County, uh, Divide County is another area that has a lot of what we call schmectitic clays. And that's the stuff that shrinks and swells uh, when it's dry or when it's wet. That can temporarily retain potassium much more than other areas of the state. And so those areas, um, instead of i believe the original threshold was like 120 pound or parts per million of potassium um, then you don't need any we we made that threshold higher because you can have some temporary retention of the potassium and it's going to be more so exacerbated during droughty conditions just because as that soil shrinks up um, it's going to more so retain that potassium and the plant can't take it up as easily you know but again soil test that, that's the most probably the most important thing you can do when it comes to managing your fertilizer know what's out there on your ground be consistent with your soil testing um, and by that I mean timing of the year because it's a different snapshot in the spring versus the fall so if you like to fall soil test keep doing it in the fall because over time it gives you a better feeling of what that ground is doing